Of all the times I finally review something Green Lantern related, I don't have a green shirt. I mean, I'll wear a Batman shirt all throughout the month of July and declare it Bat Month. I'll even have a Superman shirt, which I'll probably wear when I actually go ahead and review the Superman movie for The Man of Steel. But the one time I go ahead and review something Green Lantern related, I don't have a green shirt. Smart. This, I'm so smart. I mean, I have a green wall. Does that help? It's barely showing. Oh, and I got Batman posters too. Does that help? Because, you know, when you think of Green Lantern, you fucking think Batman. But, enough bitching aside, let's go ahead and, well, essentially bitch about something. Because I'm here to review, of course, Green Lantern the Animated Series. Why? Well, like with uh, another show that I really love, which would happen to be Young Justice, both this show and that show ended basically in the same day, in the same hour. And I might as well go ahead and give you my thoughts on it because, well, the series is over, it is only one season, so I might as well give my thoughts on it. Um, but... Basically, Green Lantern, summed up, is one of my all-time favorite TV shows ever. Basically, just with, like, Young Justice. And like Young Justice, this series I consider not really a cartoon, but an uh, actual show. Just because it's an animated show does not immediately mean it's for kids. Especially if it's on Cartoon Network. I mean, I consider this just a show in itself, because if it were adapted to actual live action... I would completely understand why, because it deals with many dark things and has many great character arcs, many great stories that would actually suffice its own, it would actually withstand its own, you know, uh, live action series or hell, even a movie. In fact, why don't they just adapt one? Of, why don't they just adapt one part of the season to a new Green Lantern movie? I swear, it would kick the shit out of that stupid, shitty Ryan Reynolds piece of crap. I mean. Just adapt this se this series overall into one movie, and I bet you fans will line up around corners just to get a glimpse of this movie. So, enough of that. Let's actually get into the series. Um, like I said, the series is absolutely amazing in every single way, which um, is very funny because when it first started out, I didn't really care about this show, and I didn't really care about the Green Lantern series in general, and the characters of Green Lantern in general, because... Like Superman, like my views of Superman, I just really didn't care about the character. He wasn't really all that interesting. Like, Batman I always found interesting because he was a deep, dark character with a lot of problems and a great rogues gallery. With Green Lantern, he really didn't have that for me, and I really just never was interested. And, like, and that's the same I can say about Superman. He just really wasn't all that interesting to me. But this show definitely proved me wrong because this show was all around interesting. In fact, that's the reason, that's probably one of the biggest things I can give this show, the biggest recognition that I can actually give this show. It really got me interested in the, the uh, character of the Green Lantern. And that's something that that piece of shit Ryan Reynolds movie could not do. Yeah, a big budget movie with some of the best Hollywood writers can give and one of the, some of the best directors that Hollywood can give, and that movie can't even get me interested in that. And that's my big problem with that movie in general. It didn't get me interested in it like it should have did what, in what a superhero origin movie should do. It didn't get me interested in the character, and it didn't get me invested in the character. But this show did, and it only had one season, and a lot of not really good attention, and really not a lot going for it, but it ended up being better than that piece of shit movie could. And trust me, I'll get to that movie sometime soon. Maybe after this, but I don't know. Um, but that's something that I must give this show. It actually got me interested in the character. And if any movie that's based off a superhero that I never really knew of, or any show that's based off a superhero that I never knew of, can actually get me interested in this show, it's got a lasting memory in my, in my eyes. But enough of that. Let's get into some of the things that actually make the show. First, let's get into some of the characters quick. The main character is, of course, the main Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. He's also uh, portrayed by Josh Keaton. Now, Josh Keaton is a great voice actor, in my opinion. I would probably put him in, like, my top five, if not three, favorite, um, like, voice actors. Any character that he plays just fits the role completely. And not to mention that he also played Peter Parker slash Spider-Man in, you know, the good Spider-Man series, Spectacular Spider-Man. Had that piece of shit Ultimate Spider-Man series. And trust me, I'll get to that soon, too. God, I got a lot of shitty comic book stuff to review. 
But uh, anyways, any character that he plays, uh, immediate, his voice immediately fits that character. It, he does a great job with the characters. He brings a lot of really funny humor, really funny jokes to each of these characters. And for some reason, almost any show that he's in, it immediately gets cancelled. Again, Spectacular Spider-Man and now this. That's bullshit, especially for a great actor like Josh Keaton. But I digress. The next character that we have is also the second character, Kilwa, who's also who's played by Kevin Michael Richardson. Again, another great voice actor, which I would immediately put on my top like favorite uh, voice actors list. Uh, he, and again, any character that he plays, that uh, his voice immediately fits the look and description of that character. He's also playing Shredder in the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series, and his voice fits that character great. And like Kill and like that voice. Uh, his voice fits Kilwag in this series perfectly. In fact, um, um, I mentioned this before, um, the actor, uh, Michael Clark Duncan, passed away last year in September, and he's actually the voice, and he's actually the guy that provided the voice for Kilwag in the Green Lantern movie. One of the only things about that movie that actually was good. But seeing as how he recently passed away, I wouldn't mind at all if Kevin Michael Richardson stepped in to actually play that character. I mean, especially for something minor like a voice, uh, especially something minor like that. I mean, in comic book movies, they always get someone else to step in for a role. Someone drops out of that role for some reason or another. So, why not him? It'd be a great addition. His voice fits perfect for that, and it would be a nice little throwback to this great show. So, come on, Warner Brothers. At least make that good decision. But, I digress. The character, again, is also funny, just like Hal Jordan in the series. And it brings a lot of comedic values while also being badass as well. And if any of you think different, then you're definitely a poozer. Next character that we have is the computer intelligence of the group, which, you would have to, which would be Aya, played by Great Isle, who also played Catwoman in Batman Arkham City. So, of course, yeah, she's my kind of character. But Great Isle uh, does a great job, as usual, with this. Um, she's voiced a bunch of characters, which I'm not even going to try memorizing right now and try and tell you which characters that she played, because she's played over billions of them. She's like Tara Strong. She's just played a bunch of characters throughout my childhood that I remember, but, you know, I'm not even going to try, um, telling you which characters those are. Just look at her IMDb page, and trust me, that's as long as, like, all three Lord of the Rings movies, I'm telling you. Um, but she does a great job in this, as usual, with her voice acting. She does a great job. Uh, she's playing, um, a computer robot in this, so, um, it's more emotionless, but you can definitely recognize her voice immediately. And that's something I like about, um, Great Isle too. Her voice is just so recognizable in anything that she does that you immediately like, oh, hell yeah, this is great because she's in it. So, um... Also, the character of Aya is probably one of my all-time favorite characters in this show because, um, like the next character, Razor, which I'll get into in a minute, has a big um, arc in the series, which she goes from just being a regular computer to being a robot, to being a robot with emotions, to being a villain, to having to sacrifice herself to save the entire universe. And that's all around great, and she's probably one of the only uh, robots in the show, in anything really, that actually has real emotions. Um, she kind of reminded me of the Scarlet Witch's husband in the Marvel comics, where it's an actual robot with human emotions. In fact, she was created with an actual sliver of human emotions, which is really interesting and kind of makes her a really unique character, instead of just making her a generic stupid robot just to be there to be a generic stupid robot, because all sci-fi series need to have one of those. But she was an all-around great character with a great voice actress to boot, so props to Great A While for voicing a great character. But the last and final main character that we have is Razor, played by Jason Spezik. And I probably butchered that last name completely, but I've seen him do that a lot lately. Um, who voices the character Razor, but he also voices Kid Flash in Young Justice. Again, another show that, another voice actor voicing a character, another show that got canceled after one or two seasons. What the fuck? Um, but he has a great job as a character of Razor, and, um, again, uh, this is another character that I absolutely loved because he had a great overlying arc that, uh, went throughout the whole series. He goes from being evil, um, from being a Red Lantern, to being a part of the Green Lanterns, and uh, I, I love characters like that. I always love characters that, from being, uh, they 
uh, turn from being evil to being good. And I always love characters like that, and which I love characters with arcs, and I love story arcs in TV shows. Again, another reason why I love the Green Lantern, the animated series, and Young Justice. Just these characters have so many arcs, and the stories have so many arcs going for it, that that's what I like. I don't like shows just that, that have complete just everything fucked up and no continuity. I like shows with arcs, that, with characters that have arcs, and the story arcs, and I just like that. Um, his character had a great arc, because he has to go from being uh, evil to being good, and then eventually probably having to kill the one and only woman that he loves, which is Aya. Again, it's a computer, which will a robot, which will probably make you think, how does that work? And I'm not even going to go in there. This is Rule 34, guys, so go to that website. That's not my business. Um, but, uh, again, a great story arc, a great character, and a great voice actor to boot. So, you know, props to that. Props to him for making a great character, um, you know, with his voice. And just overall being a great character. I thought he was awesome, and... I definitely love the little thing, the little nice little nod at the end uh, of the series where he's hopeful now and he, he's going to find Aya even though she's dead and he just has, you know, nothing but hope going for him and a uh, blue, blue lantern flies after him because, you know, he's full of hope and blue lanterns run on hope. That was just a great thing and a great closure to that character. In fact, if they did continue the series, I would actually not want him to come back. Um, as a Blue Lantern, yes, but, um, I would actually, you know, fuck it, I would like to see that story actually happen, I would love to see him as a Blue Lantern, and just fuck anything I said before. Um, but now let's get into the story. The story of the series is, well, uh, half. Um, the show, um, the season itself was actually split into, into 13 episodes, First part was 13 episodes, second part was 13 episodes, and each 13 episodes have their own story going for it. The first 13 episodes have the Green Lanterns going up against the Red Lanterns. The second season have uh, the uh, Kilowog, Green Lantern, uh, or Hal Jordan, and Razor going against the Anti-Monitor, then turned the Aya Monitor. Um, and out of both, out of which one was my favorite, well... Again, like Young Justice, I would have to go with the second story, the Aya Monitor story, because there was a lot more going for it. There was a lot more um, risk that they took, because, like, in almost every single episode, if you noticed, almost any character died in the season, in this, in that, in those episodes. I mean, there was a point, there was a point where I almost died, there was a point where Hal Jordan even almost died, where one of the Guardians almost died, uh, like, and Razor almost died, like, a couple times. Almost any character died, and they took a lot of risk by doing that. Yeah, sure, some of them were brought back to the life and stuff like that, but... They it took a lot of risk with this season. It was really heartbreaking in almost any single scene. Like with, you know, Razor having to deal with probably having to go and kill Aya. And then she eventually dies by injecting herself with a uh, computer virus. It was sad and it was dark. And that's why I love shows like these. They're not afraid to take risks. And they're not afraid to get dirty and to do dark things like this, and that's why I love shows like this within Young Justice. They're not like stupid fucking kid shows that have no continuity whatsoever, like Annoying Orange or Johnny Test or whatever those fucking shows are. Uh, it, it knows when to do what they want to do, and it knows when to get dirty and when it wants to, and it, when it wants to go think out of the box and just do its own shit. I love stuff like that, and that's why I like the second uh, half of the season more. It was just more... Darker and just, it was badass and cool, and just the whole series overall was just so badass and cool and amazing and awesome in every way, shape, and form. And if you haven't seen that, then fuck you. I mean, seriously, if you were one of those people out there that didn't end up watching the show because you're a big Green Lantern fan and you thought it was going to be bad, then watch it again because it was great and it was amazing and it really got me interested in the Green Lantern character to the point where I'm probably going to go out and buy all the good comics of Green Lantern and study up on this character and bitch more about the Green Lantern movie than I already have. So, Green Lantern, the animated series... 
like Young Justice, a 10 out of 10. A perfect 10 out of 10. I love this series finale. That also gets a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, just everything was just so good and so amazing. And I honestly can't really top anything right now. Because it was just such a great show. Go out and watch it. And when it comes on DVD or, or Blu-ray or whatever, you know I'm fucking buying that. So, uh, same thing with Young Justice. So, that's all I have to say about that. I'm sorry the video is long. I just had a lot to say about that. In fact, I have a lot to say about uh, a lot of... I have a lot to say about other stuff because they run like 15, 20 minutes also. But thank you for, you know, watching. Please subscribe and tell me what you thought about both Young Justice and Green Lantern in the NBC with the comments below. And if you're really pissed off and, um, you know, about the whole Young Justice and, uh, and Green Lantern stuff being cancelled, well, like a Blue Lantern, guys, have hope in your hearts. Because we're not the only ones that are fighting. It's not like the careers left us in the dust just to fight to, for Young Justice and Green Lantern to be cancelled. The careers are fighting it, too. They're, they want to, the, these shows come back on the air, and they want to tell these stories. So, they're fighting, too. They really want these shows to be back on the air. So, again, like Blue Lanterns, have some hope in your heart. Because maybe on a slim chance, we will get these shows back eventually. Which is a lot coming from me, because I have absolutely no hope in these shows. Because, like many other shows, cancel shows rarely, rarely ever come back. But then again, Cartoon Network bought back Toonami, Cartoon Cartoon Planet, and is coming back with Powerpuff Girls. So maybe sometime down the line, they'll come back with Green Lantern the Animated Series and Young Justice. But until then, I'm 123 Movies Rule, and like Blue Lanterns, have some hope in your hearts. See ya.